What's up developers and welcome back to a very special video on this channel which will not be a coding tutorial but we're going to have a look at a free tech salary report that has been created by Talent.io. In this video we're going to break down the company behind the tech salary report named Talent.io. Then we will have a look at the location where research for the tech salary report has been done. We're going to dive into the career paths and rules since coding is more than being a backend developer. We're going to cover the median tax salaries in Europe and the demand for front and back end developers. I'm going to advise up and coming developers that either want to move to Europe or find a remote job where the company is located within Europe. The tax salary report also covers remote working, so we're going to have a look at how accepted remote working truly is. Finally, we're going to look at the salaries of remote jobs versus on site jobs. At the moment, I'm located on join.talent.io which I have linked in the description down below, where we could download the tech salary report of talent.io. Quick note, the tech salary report is completely free and there's no shadiness going on where you need to add your credit card data. What you simply need to do is add your first name, so let's say Dari, my last name. Then we need to add a role, which in my case will be a tech professional. And finally, we need to add our email address. Once you have done that, simply check the check mark where you could download the report. Now I'm going to download the report and open it in full screen, so give me a moment and I'll be back once that's done. We have all heard it before. You can easily find a job as a developer. Even though I do technically agree with that, and there are tons of companies out there hiring up and coming developers, it doesn't mean that the process of getting a job is easy. There are tons of companies hunting, while there are also tons of developers hunting tech companies to get hired. With the help of Talent.io, companies do not need to directly get in touch with you through LinkedIn or any other platform. But Talent.io makes it easy for companies to hire for permanent or remote positions. If you're not 100% sure if it helps, consider these numbers. Talent.io has analyzed more than 100,000 contact requests with developers to develop the tech salary report. More than 6,000 developers have found a job through Talent.io. Based on the high demand of developers, Talent.io decided to create the Talent Club which is basically a hub or community where you could get access to weekly newsletters and reports with advice from experts. One of the most important reports that Talent.io has developed is the Tech Salary Report, where median salaries of developers in Europe, most used technologies, average daily rates of tech freelancers, and the expansion of remote work is being covered. Since Talent.io is located in Europe, the research that has been done for the Tech Salary Report has also been covered in Europe mostly because the companies that hire through Talent.io are also located in Europe. The COVID-19 pandemic has opened eyes for companies as well. Not all companies have the developers working fully on site nowadays, which makes it awesome to get a job in Europe while you're living in another country. And this is awesome for my YouTube target audience, since it's all across the globe. As a developer living in Europe, I can only speak from my own experience where I say that it's very accessible to find a job in Europe where you're not living there. The tech salary report has in-depth research on cities such as Paris, Lyon, Toulouse, Bordeaux, Munich, Hamburg, Berlin, Amsterdam, Brussels, and London. We're not going to cover these individually, but we're going to have a look at the global results. Being a developer is a very global term, since there are different roles you could cover when it comes to development. Based on the position of a developer, the tech salary report has decided to base their report on front-end developers, back-end developers, full-stack developers, lead developers, and mobile developers. When looking at the salary map of Europe, there are a couple key points that stick out from. Cities where the cost of living is high, salaries are in general higher as well. And with the cost of living, I'm thinking about the amount of money that you need to cover the bare minimum. Think about housing, you also need to make sure that you eat, pay your taxes, and have a decent health care. As a European, I can say from experience that cities such as London, Paris, Amsterdam, Munich and Berlin are quite expensive. At the beginning of this year, the International Rent Index confirmed with their newly published report which says that Paris, London and Amsterdam are the most expensive cities in Europe to rent an apartment. This means that even though the salaries are a lot higher in those cities, you most likely will end up saving less than let's say a city such as Bordeaux, Lyon or Toulouse. The advantage you have with big cities? is the fact that it offers a lot of tech jobs since the tech industry is a lot bigger. A lot of big companies across the world are mostly located within the biggest cities of the world. Another interesting fact that stuck my mind was the median salary for developers based on their experience. 
If we take a look at our 0 to 1 and 2 to year experience from Paris, Berlin, London and Amsterdam, we will see that the race percentage is a lot higher than in smaller cities such as Lille, Lyon, Bordeaux and Toulouse. So even though your starting salary is a bit higher in the bigger cities, over time it's also a lot easier to make more money. If we take a look at the most used backend technologies in Europe, you will see that JavaScript is the most used in the United Kingdom, the Netherlands, Germany and France, and it's also number 2 in Belgium. So what does this mean? JavaScript is more than just a front-end tool. Secondly, frameworks are the future. If we take a look at the United Kingdom, you will see that Node.js, Django and Spring are top 3. All 3 are frameworks within a programming language. And the same goes for the Netherlands, right here. Where you can see that Node, Django and Spring are also number 1, 2 and 3. The same goes for Germany, the same goes for Belgium. And even for France. Since I mostly create PHP content, I got to say that I was kind of surprised with the results. Since I'm in a PHP bubble, or better to say an algorithm of PHP, I obviously only see PHP content and think it's number one in all countries. This is, and I think very good for a lot of PHP developers, a reality check that there is more in coding than PHP. When looking at this list as a PHP developer, I would say that learning Golang as a second language would be my choice. Go is an object-oriented programming language which has been designed by Google. Which also brings me to my second question. Should I learn more than one programming language? Over the years, I've seen tons of developers learning as many programming languages as they can. Personally, I'm against that. When you are trying to learn many programming languages, you eventually end up learning none perfectly. When looking for a job, you will quickly find out that working with a programming language at a company requires in-depth dedication which you simply cannot get when learning multiple languages. Now how accepted is remote working? I've touched on it a little bit, but I personally think that the COVID-19 situation brought a very, very small positivity for us. Remote working got more accepted, especially in Europe for Europeans. And let me double say that real quick. You do need to be living somewhere in Europe, which makes the visa situation a lot easier. Therefore, Talent.io is pushing remote work quite a lot since they have researchers, candidates and recruiters based in France and Germany. Now, based on research, you can see that nearly 66% of the candidates have said that they cannot work in a company that doesn't offer remote work, where almost two-thirds of the interviewees have said that they do not work 100% on-site. Now, what is the salary difference between remote jobs and on-site jobs? The median salary for a junior developer in Paris is 45k. If we compare that to the median salary for developers that work on-site, you will see that the salary of a remote worker is even higher since developers in Paris earn between 40 and 45k. The median salary for a junior developer working remote in Berlin is 50k. Now the median salary for an on-site junior developer in Berlin is between 50 and 55k meaning that remote workers earn a bit less working for companies in Berlin. Now the median salary for a developer who works remotely in London is approximately 58k. The median salary for an on-site job in London is approximately 41k, meaning that remote developers earn 17k more when working remote for companies in London, which is a very high amount. Now what are the average daily rates for a freelancer in the real world? Just like the remote working market, the freelancing market is growing rapidly as well. There are many developers that work for companies on a freelance basis, mainly because it earns more money. Keep in mind that doing that means that you have to take care of your healthcare and pension yourself. The average daily rate is 580 euros. If we multiply that by 20 working days a month, you'll be earning a whopping 11.6k a month. Keep in mind that it is very difficult to have a freelance job for 40 hours a week consistently over a period. Finding a job on site or abroad is harder than it sounds, even in the tech business. If you apply for jobs where you don't get the job, make sure that you ask enough questions why they didn't choose you, so you could improve on those points. Secondly, as a beginner, stay motivated to learn. Following money blindly doesn't make you a better developer. Asking questions, working with good colleagues and having the right environment does. New programming languages pretty much come out on a weekly basis. And trust me when I say that you can't keep up with them. But that doesn't mean that you shouldn't give tools other than your own a try. Now this was it for this video where we dived into the tech salary report created by Talent.io, which is free to download in the description down below. 
The key takeaways for this video are that the most used backend technologies in Europe are Node.js, Java and Python, the salaries in Amsterdam, London, Paris and Berlin are the highest, but the living condition in those countries are also the highest. We've also seen that remote working is highly accepted in Europe, but you have to be a European citizen to find a job since it does require a visa. Finally, salaries of remote workers are pretty much equal or even higher than on-site jobs. If you do like this content and you want to see more, leave this video a thumbs up and if you're new to this channel, please hit the subscribe button.